Welcome back to Coogan's Critters. Today, we will be discussing vegetable production. In vegetable production, there are many steps that should all be done to the best of your ability. Step 1. Choose a crop that will grow well in your area. For example, sweet corn grows well in Florida. What affects this choice is climate. Climate is the weather conditions prevailing in an area in general or over a long period. Let's examine the following chart for a further look into how climate affects vegetable production. Rain. If it rains a lot in an area, a plant would have lots of water, but too much rain would result in drowning the plant. Heat. Plants need some heat. If it is too cold, they will freeze. However, too much heat would not be beneficial. Air. Plants need lots of carbon dioxide in the air for many things such as photosynthesis. Wind. If an area is windy, the plant may be uprooted if it is very windy, which would obviously not be good. Step 2. Plant during the correct growing season. A growing season is the part of the year during which rainfall and temperature allows plants to grow. In Florida, sweet corn is grown during the spring growing season. Step 3. Prepare soil. Soil is arguably one of the most important factors in vegetable production. Soil has five main components. First up we have minerals. Minerals are the largest component, making up 45 to 49% of the soil's volume and have two primary types of minerals. Primary, derived from the original material, and secondary, derived from primary minerals. Second to minerals, we have water. Water is the second basic component, making up 2 to 50%. Water transports nutrients and facilitates decomposition. Moving on, we have organic material. Creating 1-5% to of the soil's volume, they are derived of organic materials and are incredibly productive for plant growth, usually taken as a sign of fertile soil. Next up is gases. Gases are essential, as oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen are all important. They make up 2 to 50% of the soil's volume. Finally, we have microorganisms. Even though they may make up less than 1% of the soil's volume, they are important. They recycle dead organisms into humus, which is rich with necessary plant nutrients. Step 4. Plant properly. To plant properly, you should use best management practices. Best management practices are actions agricultural producers take to limit the amount of fertilizer, pesticide, etc. entering our resources and acting as a pollutant. This includes nutrient management, irrigation management, and water resource protection. Step 5. Water constantly. When watering, you should use irrigation methods that fit the crop. For sweet corn, the overhead sprinkler would be preferable for a large vegetable crop. Step 6. Fertilize constantly. When using fertilizer and pesticides, always read the label. You might think you know what's on the label, but you don't have time to read the fine print. That doesn't matter. Read the label and follow the safety precautions. Step 7. Eliminate weeds. Step 8. Harvest often. The two main types of harvesting techniques are manual and mechanized. Manual involves manually harvesting with a knife or such, and mechanized involves using machinery. Step 9. Control pests. Pests on crops are extremely negative. In short, pest equals eat crops, eaten crops equals less crops, less crops equals less yield, less yield equals less money, less money equals bad for farmers and economy. Conclusively, pests are bad. Step 10. Store crops. Store crops using many storage methods such as silos, refrigerators, and underground pits. In all these steps, biotechnology is often present. Some pros of biotechnology include a larger yield, a greater financial return, and lower production cost. Some cons of biotechnology include impacts on non-target species, a loss of biodiversity, and allergens and toxins. That's all for today. Check out our latest video and don't forget to hit the like button.